word that you've given to me <clears throat> this week to bring forth to your people. I pray for each and every individual, both here and online, that they would all have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive your truth in the mighty name of Jesus. So I'm going to bring this word today, and I'm, I'm, I'm in awe myself because of the fact that it's a very simple word. I think it's one that we all know, but God gave me so many different nuggets with this that I, I want to share with you guys. And my title is, The Devil is Real. Let me tell you, when, when, when the Lord told me that he wanted me to do this word, I said, the body of Christ knows that the devil is real. And he said to me, some of them do. Not everyone believes it. I was like, oh, okay. But that's not to mention the fact that, as you guys all know, we, we live stream, we do SoundCloud. So the word is going out across the world. And there are people all over the place that do not know that the devil is real, okay? Um, there are many people who, when, when bad things happen, they just say, oh, well, that's coincidence, or, or that's just my bad luck. We don't understand. I truly believe the body of Christ as a whole doesn't truly understand the power in our words. You know, more times than not, we want to blame the enemy for what's going on in our lives. And although I do believe he plays a big part in things that go on in our lives, there's a lot of things that we bring upon ourselves by the things that come out of our mouth. Did you hear what I said? There's a lot of things that we bring upon ourselves because of the things that come out of our mouth. As children of God, we should be speaking the word of God. The word of God is truth, okay? <clears throat> There's so many ways. Oh, I could go off on so many ways, but I'm not going to go there right now. Um, I, I want to tell you that uh, although we don't need to study, if you will, like the word of God tells us to study, to show ourselves approved, we don't need to study, if you will, of the devil, but we do need to be aware of his tactics and how he operates. Because if you don't know how he operates, you can be tripped up so stinking easily. Hey, it, it, it happens to all of us. I don't care what you, you know, what kind of title you may carry, where you may work, what you may do. It doesn't matter who you are. The devil is not racist. He doesn't care what nationality you are. He doesn't care what color skin you have. He doesn't care what country you're from, what, what language you speak. He, he's not a racist in any way, shape, or form. He will use anybody that will allow him to. And yes, you heard me correctly, that will allow him to, because we allow him to. Several months ago, the Lord spoke to me very clearly, and he said to me, Kathy, keep your eyes on me. Be focused on me. Because I went to him and I said, Lord, there's so many things coming through media and, and just that I'm hearing people in the body of Christ say about this bad thing and that bad thing and the other bad thing is coming. And he said to me, keep your, is this like, like too loud that I feel? Ooh. Okay. Well, he said, keep your eyes focused on me. So I'm like, okay. Okay. So every day I remind him, you said to keep my eyes focused on you. Help me to keep my eyes focused on you. Okay. So first thing I want to do is go over the names that the devil is known by, okay? Because there's several of them. There's the enemy, the devil, the deceiver, the antichrist, Satan, and Lucifer. There may be more. Not really sure if there are more or not, but pardon me? Accuser of the brethren, yep. This is, so there's so many names that he goes by. My, the ones that I use the most are the enemy and the devil. So dictionary.com says the devil means the supreme spirit of evil or Satan, a, support, a subordinate evil spirit at enmity with God and having power to afflict human, humans both with bodily dis-ease and with spiritual corruption. Did you hear that? An atrocity. Atrociously wicked, cruel, or ill-tempered person. You know how you hear people say their kids will be doing something just so bad, and they'll be like, oh, he's just a little devil. Their person, their child, they don't even realize it. 
but I've heard people say it all the time. Dictionary.com says Satan means, are you ready for this? <clears throat> the chief evil spirit, the greatest adversary of humanity, the devil. So we get it. The, the, the devil, the enemy is bad, not good in any way, shape, or form. Now, we need to understand that we're created in the image of God. Oh, wait a minute. Let me tell you the foundational scriptures. I skipped right over that. Um, the foundational scriptures are Isaiah 14, 12 through 21, John 10, 10, and Isaiah 60. So we need to understand that we're created in the image of God, and we know that God is Father, Son, and Spirit, and we are body, soul, and spirit. Do you notice the correlation, three and three? We're made in the image of God. So we're going to go to Genesis 1, 26 and 27. And it reads, Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creepy thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So it doesn't matter if you're a man or if you're a woman, you're created in the image of God. And I'm just as a side note here, I don't know if any of you have seen the movie um, The Shack. The Shack was an amazing movie. It portrays God as a woman. I know there were a lot of people that like flipped out over that, but he is man and woman, so there you have it. Okay, when we understand, when we truly understand in the depths of our beings that we, are, that we were created in the image of God and that the enemy, the devil, Lucifer, was one of God's best, if you will. That's why he, create, he, he chose him to be what was he, the, the head of worship, right? When we understand this and what took place when the enemy fell, then we will understand why the enemy hates us so much and he wants us out of the way. Because you got to understand, the enemy only wants the worst for each and every one of you. The devil's biggest job, and we know in John 10.10 10 tells us, the, we'll go to John 10.10. 10. John 10.10 10 says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. And it goes on to say, but I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. The I there is God or Jesus, okay? When, when something happens to you or you go through a situation and you're like, I, I just don't understand, you know, we as a people here, especially in America, you've heard it said time and time again, a storm will come through and, and the insurance companies say an act of God, right? You have damage to your house, you got to do a claim and it's an act of God. Guys, it's not an act of God, it's an act of the devil. The devil is the one that comes. If you take any situation and you compare it to the word of God, is this destroying something in my life? Is this killing something in this life? Is this taking away from me? I should not be booming like that. Well, that's driving me buggy. Lord, forgive me. But anyway, um, so we know that when we compare it to the scripture, I mean, take John 10.10. 10. I don't care what it is, the situation you're facing. Take that scripture, and if it does any of those things, it is it's simple. It's not from God. It's not from God. God's not out to destroy your relationships. God's not out, well, there are times that God will remove relationships in your life. If, if you're involved with someone who's causing destruction in your life, God will do things to dissolve that relationship. But he's not a destroyer. He's not a destroyer of marriages, okay? So if you're, you find your husband's cheating on you, that's not God. That's not God. Hear me, that's not God. God's never going to make a man divorce a woman to go marry another woman. 
even if it's a woman who's single, especially if it's a woman who's already married. I've heard, and I say this because I've heard this in recent months of people that have been doing this kind of thing. And I'm like, oh, dear Lord, help them. Give them eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive the truth because that's not truth. God's not going to do that. God's not in the mix of that, okay? Okay, so we're going to read the story about Lucifer's fall. We're going to go to Isaiah 14. And I'm reading, I think this is a modern English version that I'm reading of it. Isaiah 14, 12 through 21. It says, how are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also on the mount of the congregation in the recesses of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Those who see you shall stare at you and ponder over you. Is this the man who made the earth to tremble and shook, king, shook kingdoms? Who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities? Who did not open the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, even all of them lie in glory, each one in his own tomb. But you are cast out of the grave like an abominable branch, and clothed with those who are slain, thrust through with a sword, who go down to the stones of the pit, as a corpse tre trodden underfoot. You shall not be joined with them in burial, because you have destroyed your land and slain your people. This is Lucifer, okay? The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare a place of slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers must not, uh, not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. The Lord knew before all this happened what was going to happen, which is why he had the plan of Jesus before this took place. So do, so I get, Lord, how do you want me to say this? First of all, the, the, the key in this is why did Lucifer fall? It's called pride. One of the biggest issues that we see in the world today, pride. God is not proud of pride. <laughs> you know, I, how many times we say, oh, I'm so proud of you, I'm so proud of you. And it's not, it's not bad to be proud of your kids when they do good things and so on and so forth. But when you take pride to the nth degree and say, I'm going to be like the most high. I want you to worship me. Forget him. Look what I can do for you. And look at look, when we look around the world today, especially amidst all this COVID stuff and what God is doing or what the enemy is doing, he's saying, you know, I'll give you what you need. I'll, I'll do for you what, what God can't do. And, of course, so many people don't know God, okay? They truly don't know God. And there's a lot in and out of the church that don't know God, unfortunately, because we, no, I won't go there. But long story short, the enemy wants to destroy. That's his main thing, and he will do it any way he can. If he can build you up to say, look at me, I'm the greatest pastor in the world because I never closed my church, right, in, amidst all this. We've got to check our hearts. We've got to know where we stand. Listen, I believe the truth needs to be preached, especially about this whole COVID stuff, because it, it, the COVID is a ploy of the enemy. I don't care what anybody says. It's a complete ploy of the enemy. We, we, you know, I don't know how many people have heard of one world order, but the, the goal is to have a one world order, one government ruling the whole world, okay? This is what COVID is all about. That's why when people say to you, well, but COVID's not just here in America, because you can talk to people and say this is a political thing, and they'll say to you, but it's not just here in America. You're right, it's not, because the politics go beyond America. Okay, the, the, the issue is this, and I'll get into this later, so I'm not going to go into depth of, with it right now, but the fact of the matter is that the United States of America was founded 
on godly principles from the beginning. From the very beginning of its birth, it was founded on godly principles. Okay? That's why the, dis, the, the attack here on America is so great. And I'm not saying that the attack on other countries isn't great. I'm talking about America here right now. Okay? Um, so anyway, back to Lucifer in his fall. And when he fell, he understood because he knew. He was from the creation of time. He knew that when God created us, why he created us. And he knows that once we are born into the world, because you are born, I don't care what religion you're born into, I don't, I, as human beings, you're born into the image and likeness of God. Okay, that's the reality of it. So being that way, when people come to the understanding of the power and authority that they carry and what they can do, they become powerful against the enemy, okay? And he knows that. That's why he doesn't want you. He doesn't care if you make Jesus the Lord of your life, but he wants you to be totally ineffective for him, okay? He doesn't want you out there ministering to the lost and the hurting, to the addicts, to the prostitutes, to this one, that one, and the other one. He doesn't want that because if that happens... He's in real trouble. I mean, I've been listening so much lately to Mario Murillo and, and, and a couple others, and when, when you listen to them and the things that they're talking about, it's like, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness. We're seeing this stuff play out right before our eyes. We are seeing the Bible play out before our eyes. I do believe wholeheartedly we are in the last days, okay? I'm not saying Jesus is coming tomorrow <laughs> as much as I would be okay with that. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we are in the last of the last days, and I do believe that. It's, it's kind of funny because um, when I first got saved, or shortly thereafter, which has been about 20 years now, I would say to Bob, if we got 20 years left here on the earth, that's a lot. And he's like, I'll cap it here. And I'm like, and now I now we're in the position we're in, and I'm like, wow, Lord, like, like, wow, like, I mean, and I, again, I'm not saying that I know when Jesus is returning. I'm, I, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just, I believe we're in the last of the last days. So, okay, I feel like I'm skipping around, and I hope you guys are getting stuff out of this. There's just so much, and I just don't even really know how to put it all together right. So, Lord, the second point that I want to talk about is that the enemy is on a rampage to destroy America, which is what I said. Um, I believe that this... Uh, this country, or wait a minute, let's see, America, because I believe, believe America is the last country that needs to come into alignment with the others, because just about every other nation out there is for this one world order, okay? We're the last one, the last godly nation that's going, oh, wait a minute, no, 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 this isn't a good thing. It's not a good thing. You know, I know that they tell, you know, it's like the big thing with socialism being such a wonderful thing now. Just, you know, the government will pay for everything. Listen, if the government is paying for everything, who do you think is paying the government to hand out the money? It's all coming from your pockets, folks. Socialism will raise your taxes to the point that you'll be like, what? Where's my money? <laughs> Where's my paycheck? You know what I mean? He is trying to bring down the Christian church because he knows how real God is. And I think part of the problem is the body of Christ doesn't believe how real God is. You know, we've got a lot of people who say, the Lord is my Savior. I trust him. I believe him. And then they turn around and they do something and you're going, but wait a minute. Like, for instance, and hear me when I say this, okay? I am not mocking churches that close. What I am upset about is, why did you close? Why did you close? Do we believe the word of God? Do we believe Psalm 91, which tells us that the Lord is our, our protector? He says he will protect us against any plague. Is COVID not a plague? Listen, I'm not saying COVID's not real. It's real. It's killing people. I get that. But you can be protected of that from a, a, if you're a child of God. But you've got to believe it for yourself. You've got to declare it for yourself. I cannot do it for you. I just can't. I wish I could, but I can't. That's not my job. As a believer, you've got to believe for yourself, okay? Hallelujah. 
Okay, so he, and he, he's experienced God hand, firsthand, and he knows that his days are short. And we know that they are. Not how short, but we know that they are. We've got, to, we've got to get out of the mode of just coming to church on Sunday mornings and sitting, soaking up for an hour or so, and then leaving. Our job as a believer goes on day and night 24-7. 24-7. It can work in your own home. It can work at the grocery store. It can work at your place of employment. It can work at the gas station. It doesn't matter where you are. You are the light set on a hill. The light is Jesus. The light is the truth of the word of God. I know it can be overwhelming when you're at work and you're surrounded by people who do not believe. They intimidate you into silence. So my prayer has been, Lord, you give me the words to speak when I need to speak them. And I've been praying for each and every one of the people that I work for that they would have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive. Listen, if you don't have eyes to see the truth in the word of God or ears to hear the truth in the word of God, it don't matter how much I talk to you. Right? The Lord told us in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Let's go there. He told us pretty clearly what our job is. Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says, Then Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. When I, when I say those words and I think about it, I think of the times that I have been in situations where I know if I had spoken the right thing, I could have made a difference, but I didn't. It's, this is why it's so important for us to be in constant communion with the Lord, constant communion. That means when you find yourself in a situation where things are getting heated, the discussion is getting heated, you need to speak to the Lord in your mind and say, am I supposed to say anything? Do I shut up and walk away? What do I do? Lord, help me. He says we have not because we ask not. Are we reaching out to him in communion? Because you have that ability 24-7 at any moment in time. You can say, Lord, I, I, I need your help here. I, I mean, I've told you guys the story of when, when I was doing the paper route and driving in, this, in uh, Fayetteville Manlius in those hills in the wintertime. And the snow was horrific. This one hill, I can still picture it in my mind, and I'm at the top of the hill, and I'm going, okay, Lord, I need your help to get down this hill without sliding off into somebody's yard or into somebody's car because I just had a little itty-bitty prism, (laughs) and the snow was pretty deep. And he did. He got me through. But I was in constant communion with him through that period of time, and he's like that with us all the time. I just don't think that we think of those things all the time. Yes, yes, you do need to be expecting. You need to be expecting that when you reach out, he's going to answer you because he's faithful to do that. And I know anybody that's gone through anything and has done that knows what I'm talking about, you know? I remember gr- grabbing, the, <laughs> grabbing the steering wheel and saying, Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> I need you. And he did. He was faithful. Okay, now, this doesn't mean that we stop until he returns. It doesn't mean like those people that are just waiting for the rapture to come, that are just going to sit here and wait, and Lord, I'm saved, and I'm good, and I'm just waiting for you to return. We have, this is what he's telling us, go and make disciples. That means we should constantly be talking to people about the Lord, constantly, okay? Um, Remember, we, you and I, as believers, are supposed to be bringing heaven here to earth. People should look at our lives and see a difference in our lives. We shouldn't look like the next guy. Now, it doesn't mean we're not going to trip up and we're not going to do things and say things that make us fall, that we sit there and go, oh, Lord, forgive me, okay? But it means that we shouldn't constantly be in the the chaos and the craziness that the rest of the world is in. Fear being one of the biggest things through this COVID. How many people are locked up in fear? I'm not going to go to church. I'm not going to go to work. Oh, you know what? Well, I need groceries. I'll call and order my groceries, and I'll just go pick them up. And and that's not necessarily a bad thing, especially if you have an issue, a breathing issue of some sort. 
then by all means, call the store. That's the gr- one of the greatest things they've come up with to help you. But if you don't have an issue, then you don't have a problem being out amongst other people. Listen, I believe, as Pastor Bob has said, if we don't open our voice, if we don't start, you know, doing things against what they're saying, we're never, we're going to see the face mask thing forever. And I don't believe that's of God at all. Listen, we were not created to inhale our own CO2. Think about that. I don't know what we're going to see in the future, but I do believe if they, if they continue to do this, you're going to see people who are going to have breathing issues if they don't already, because that's not the way our bodies were designed. We were not designed to, to inhale our own CO2. That's going to be a health issue down the road, I do believe. So my prayer is that this whole thing ends very, very soon after the elections. <laughs> I believe that. Um, When we are doing things the way that the Lord wants us to, he shows himself strong, right? When you pray for people and you see them get healed, is that not God in action? When I think about the conference that we had here uh, earlier last month, you know, I, I, I can't help it. As I was telling the ladies the other night it, it, when we were praying, I just can't brag on God enough for what he did. For those of you out there on social media that don't know, this is a small church in numbers. And for many, many, many years, I struggled with, well, we're small, we're small, we're small. Now, I never said, you know, oh, I just want to be such a big church, blah, 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 blah. My heart has always been, I want you guys to grow. Grow in your depth of knowledge and understanding of the Lord so that you can go out and be effective. Because we believe in going out into the streets. We believe in going out and laying hands on people. Okay, we've done it. We, we, we used to go to the mall once a week and pray for people and so on and so forth. But my point is that I just lost my train of thought. Okay, Lord, I know that this, I know Satan doesn't want this. He doesn't want people to know who he is. Oh, okay, so, so in all this, we're a small church in number. Okay, I mean, I think at the time of the conference, we had... We, about 16 people if everybody showed up. And we haven't had everybody show up all year long because of the COVID, okay? So I think we had 12 or 13, of which three of them are kids, little kids, okay? And yet, we brought Tom Scarella in to minister for almost a week. And it was just amazing how God provided everything. 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 From food to, to hotels to airplanes to the whole nine, I'm just, I, and, I, and I sit here, I sit back now that it's done, and I go, wow. Wow. And in talking about it, people have said, well, you know, well, where did the money come from? And I said, God. Because I can't tell you the, the, the cards we would get in the mail with checks in them. The, the way people gave here, it, ju- it just, it to me, is amazing. Now, listen, and that all came from this minister had called Pastor Bob and said, I'm coming to the area. I just want to, you know, come to your church for a night or two. And we said, okay. And then it got closer and closer to the time he was supposed to come, and the other pastor canceled. And so he canceled with us. And so Pastor Bob and I were talking about it, and, and, and I just felt in my time of prayer that the Lord was saying, you need to call him back, and you need to ask him to come and minister at your church. And I'm like, okay. So a couple mornings later, Pastor Bob and I were outside during our prayer time, and I said to him, this is what I really feel like I'm hearing the Lord say. And he said, well, praise God, because you know what? I'm hearing the same thing. And so it went from there. Now, listen. I didn't know how it was going to take place. And I know one of his first questions were, can you afford to pay for this for me? And so Pastor Bob asked me, and and I hadn't looked at the books, but I said, I I think we might be able to squeeze that out. Yeah, we can do that. And yet, not only were we able to cover everything that took place here, but we've got money in our account to do what we need to do for this place. 
you know, I, I, I don't know if you guys understand the depth of that, but, and, and for me, I think it's huge because, you know, we've always been a church that teaches on the four types of giving. Uh, you know, we've been ridiculed by other people and pastors for it, but we've always done it regardless because that's what the Lord's told us to do. And we've had our share of financial struggles over the years. So to see God move so strongly with this has just, I don't, there aren't even words because I hate the words that people would say <laughs> in a typical situation like this, but it's just like, wow, like, wow, God, I don't know how else to say it, but wow. I mean, he just showed himself strong, not to mention the healings that took place while he was here. So praise God for that. And just so you know, he's coming back. <laughs> Glory be to God. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm just in awe. Okay, number three. When we look at the world around us and to the, 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 in the chaos that we see going on, as I put, to the nth degree, because it's just like, again, those words I don't like to use. <laughs> we see people walking in extreme fear. And when we understand that in Romans 14, 23b, I'm not going to go there, but you can look it up if you want. This basically says that sin is fe or fear is sin. Okay, so you've got all these people, both in and out of the church, walking in fear, unbelievably. I mean, unbelievably. And and I'm not, I'm not ridiculing them because if you don't know what you don't know, of course you would walk in fear. Read for, read Romans 14. Okay, Romans 4, blah, 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 14, 23b. Romans 14, 23b, and I'm not going to read the whole section. You can do that for yourself, but this is what it says. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats because it is not from faith. This is the key, b. For whatever is not from faith is sin. So whatever you're doing that's not full of faith, if you're walking around in fear, it's not faith because faith and fear don't go together. They don't coexist together. It, it's impossible. Okay, so whatever is not from faith is sin. Okay, so that's where I get that from. People are so fearful that they're walking around willing to kill people if they don't abide by the so-called new rules that have been made. Kill people over it. Because you don't have a mask on, I'm going to kill you. Are you kidding me? That's pretty sad. And the saddest part about it is so many people have just agreed to this because the governor has said. And I'm not going to get into all of it, but the fact of the matter is if you read the Constitution of the United States of America and you read the Constitution for New York State, what he is saying by making you wear a mask is totally illegal. I do have a copy of the Constitution of the United States in my purse if anybody wants to take the time to read it. But look all this information up. I'm not, you know, like Pastor Bob says, don't take my word for it. Go find out for yourself. The fact of the matter is what he's asking us to do is illegal, period. And we also have to understand that this is not, or this, this truly is a spiritual battle. It's not a physical one. So when you see people beating people up over it, killing people over it, it just astounds me. I mean, absolutely astounds me. What is going on in your life that you think you have the right to take someone else's life because they don't agree with you? That's not the America I grew up in. We are seeing the um, um, economy teetering, if you will. And I thank God, hear me, for the man of God that is in the White House. Listen. Listen. I sat under the pastor that walked him through the salvation prayer before his inauguration. I believe he was a believer before then, but I don't think he had full understanding until before his inauguration. Okay? And he understands business. This is where I'll get into, we've got so many people judging and condemning him because of who he is. When you feel that you have the right to judge that man because you don't agree with him and the things he has done in life, 
I want you to sit and take a long, hard look in the mirror because you're not perfect either. And don't give me, well, he's the president of the United States, so he shouldn't be saying that. He's still a human being. He is not God. He is not God. Don't put him on a pedestal. All he is is a man who was willing to say, here I am, Lord, use me. Okay, maybe he didn't even say that. Maybe it was, okay, God, I'll do it. Okay? That man has been through more crap, if you will, since he has been set in office than I can even imagine. I wouldn't want his job. I wouldn't want his job. But I'll tell you what, I pray for him every single day. Every single day. We don't, you know, I uh, was listening yesterday, I think it was, and now I don't even remember who it was I was listening to, but there was a whole section on judging. And we have got such a misunderstanding of the scripture, and I can't even think of what the scripture is now that they use all the time. Um, but there's a scripture about judging people, and it's, it's totally misinterpreted. When we are judging people, you do have the right to judge people. You don't have the right to give a verdict on that judgment, okay? Do you understand what I'm saying? There is a huge difference. We are not the judge. God is. He will give the verdict, not us. You can say, well, they're doing such and such, so I don't want to be with them. I don't want to be a part of that. That's all right. You can lovingly, as a brother and sister in the Lord, go up and say, hey, do you realize that what you're doing or saying or whatever isn't godly? Listen, when you decide to do that or you feel led of the Lord to do that, please make sure that you have scripture to back yourself up with. Okay? Don't just go up to somebody and say, you're wrong. We are a society who, who feels that we have the right to speak into everybody's life, and we don't. We really and truly don't. There are times you will know someone is as wrong as day, the day is long, and the Lord will say to you, keep your mouth shut. He's done it to me before. I can't tell you. I got off of Facebook because I couldn't stand the beating up of the body of Christ, okay? Where's the love? Where's the love of God in the correction? You want to correct somebody, fine, but do it in love. Okay? We're supposed to love each other. It's the love of God that draws man to repentance. The love of God. The love of God coming through you. You're the light. You've got the love of God in you. It should be flowing through you. Right? When is the, okay, now I'm going to read this right off the paper here because this is good. When is the body of Christ going to stop judging and realize that God has always used people who are unqualified, if you will, but willing? Such as, Jacob was a cheater. Peter had a temper. David had an affair. Noah was a drunk. Jo Jonah ran from God. Paul was a murderer. Gideon was unsecure. Miriam was a gossiper. Martha was a worrier. Thomas was a doubter. Sarah was impatient. Elijah was moody. Mary Magdalene was a hooker. Moses stuttered. Zacchaeus was short. Abraham was old. And Lazarus was dead. And if we are honest with ourselves, we know that we're no different than any of these. We're not perfect in any way, shape, or form. I will not stand here and tell you that I have arrived. I learn from God all the time. I'm corrected by God all the time. All the time. I'm not perfect, but I know his truth, and I want you to know his truth as well. Many of us have issues that we're still dealing with, and that's okay. It's okay, but we do need to deal with them, okay? Remember, he knows the end from the very beginning of each of our lives, and he still uses us. And on that note, remember this that the enemy has studied you as well. The enemy has been around four years. Four years, okay? He has studied you from the time of your birth. He knows exactly what buttons to push to get you going. If you're not onto when he's pushing those buttons, you can fall into it really quickly. Been there, done that. Don't care to go back. 
<laughs> Do you understand? As I said before, he is not a racist. He doesn't care who you are. He doesn't care what your status is, what your color is, or anything else. He will use you. And I'm going to end this with my most favorite scripture. 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, then I, I being God, will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Do we understand why the Lord needs to heal our land? Let's read in Genesis 4. We're going to read 4, 2b to 10. Pizza. So, Genesis 4, 2b says, And Abel was a keeper of the flocks, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought an offering to the Lord of the fruit of the ground. Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions, and the Lord had respect for Abel and his offering. But for Cain in his offering, he did not have respect. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, you shall be accepted. But if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. It desires to dominate you but you must rule over it. Cain told Abel, his brother, and it came about when they were in the field that Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. The Lord said to Cain, where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And then he said, what, you, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. My point in all this is, do you understand that when you sin, your sin goes into the ground? I believe that that's why we have so many diseases today. Because our food is not healthy the way, I mean, there's other reasons why our food is not healthy that comes up through the ground. But you've got that sin that is just in, in, encompassing all of that food that comes up through the ground. And then we're ingesting it. So he needs to heal our land. And we will end with this. Well, maybe. <laughs> um, we're going to read Isaiah 60. This is the hope that we're looking for, okay? Isaiah 60 reads, Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the peoples. Is that not what we're seeing today? You look around. People are just so full of anger, bitterness, fear. You name it, it's there. They're, they're encroached in. But the Lord shall rise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. The nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your, of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather themselves together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried at your side. Then you shall see and be radiant, and your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. The multitude of camels shall cover your land, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. But those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and shall bear good news of the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together to you. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister to you. They shall come up with an acceptance on my altar, and I will glorify my glorious house. Who are these who fly as a cloud and as the doves to their roost? Surely the coastlands shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish shall come first, to bring your sons from afar, their silver and their gold with them, to the name of the Lord your God and to the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified you. The sons of foreigners shall build up your walls, and the king shall minister to you. For in my wrath I struck you, but in my favor I have had mercy on you. Therefore, your gates shall be open continually, 
They shall not be shut day nor night. So the men may bring to you the wealth of the nations, and their kings may be brought. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish, and those nations shall be utterly destroyed. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box tree together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons also of those who afflicted you shall come bowing before you, and all those who despised you shall bow themselves down at the soles of your feet, and they shall call you, <coughs> excuse me, the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated, so that no man met, went through you, I will make you an external excellency, a joy of many generations. You shall also suck the milk of the nations and suck the breasts of kings. Understand that evil is all around us. The Lord never said the evil is going to go away. He said, keep your focus on me. I will protect you. I, I, I look at it as we have like a bubble, a shield, like ni uh, Psalm 91 talks about. It's like a shield around us, protecting us, protecting us from the craziness going on around us. And that's what he's talking about here. The other day I was at Joni's house and we were praying, and she shared with me, and I'm kind of hoping that she will share this story, uh, vision, dream, whatever it was that you had. Oh, no, you know what I'm talking about with the wolves? So I'm going to ask Joni to come up and share this with you because it's a, a perfect visual of this. Joni. Good morning. Um, Kathy, by, by the grace of God, has, has been at my right side for so long. And um, she's been talking about, praying with me and talking with me and saying, you know, with all this COVID, with all this uh, corona, you know, things are going to happen. But we don't have to worry because God promises that he'll never leave us. He, he, he's the reason why we can walk around with our head held high and our, you know, our, our shoulders up and our, our, and confident in what he's going to do. But when you're, when you're faced with issues, the enemy becomes, he wants to prove that he's real and God's a liar. And when you don't have anybody coming alongside you, well, this is what God, God sent Kathy repeatedly. And she kept on saying, just remember, it doesn't matter what you go through, because you are the conqueror because of Jesus, because he's, he promises he'll take care of us. So one night last week, it was, um, Jim and I had gone to bed, and we have three dogs. And in, in the back of our house, all, we're surrounded by woods. And um, Jim says, Joni, listen to that. And um because there's no other people around us, we have no neighbors on either side of us, we get coyotes in our backyard regularly. Um, so much so that we had, because we have the three dogs, we had to take and, and really um, fence in a large portion of our backyard for our dogs because of the coyotes. And so this night, um, Jim says, I'm, I'm going to get a flash. I'm going to see those. I'm going to see them. And we, we got up and we went out onto the back deck. And, of course, she says, Joni, don't let the dogs out. Well, you got three dogs. You're going to tell me you're going to keep the door shut? I don't think so. So all three of them, and they're, they're going crazy. And all of a sudden, there, there was no, no sounds. And when we they're, – they're, the groups of coyotes are, are several, several. And then um, when Jim shut off the flashlight, and he's got this, this – he's a fireman, so he's, the flashlight he's got goes uh, – you, you can see it. You can see – far and all you could hear was the one and if you know anything about groups of coyotes they run in a pack but when there is something to be lured there's the one with the big mouth that gets there and and their their barking changes it's like a come out on and play just it's so cunning and and our youngest um youngest female she's going to be uh five she gets coaxed all the time with that one with the big mouth and um when jim when jim shut off the flashlight it, you know there was silence 
We went back in the house, and they started again, but not the whole pack, just the one. So we went back out there, and, and, and it was just enticing our dogs until Jim put the light on it. And, and again, dead silence. You know, and it took me, it, it, you know, we, we just thought it was all those stinking coyotes again, da 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 da, da. And we never did see them. Um, but that next day as I was praying about it, and, and, and it, came, it, it was just like a, a beacon in my spirit. The many times that Kathy has said, and he gave me a visual. The Lord gave us a visual of the coyotes and what it was doing in our backyard, just like the enemy who, who comes in. He's, he's luring us. He is. And he lures us with so many lies and, and fabrications of God's truth. But if you're not, you know, like Kathy, and when I was telling Kathy about it, she goes, Joni, that's because, think about it. I want you to focus on this. That light dispels the darkness. And that was that visual was because God was showing me the truth in Kathy's words because I was in a like a five month slump, you don't even know. And God used her to more or less say, you know, you're we're all gonna go through things, but we don't have to worry. We don't have to be afraid. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Glory be to God. <laughs> Glory be to God. So, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for this word. I, I pray for the nuggets that have been deposited in each and every one because these people do have eyes to see your truth, ears to hear your truth, and hearts to receive your truth. We thank you and we praise you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.